My BYD seal has a flat tire, so today I'm going to show you how to fix it the right way on this episode of Beyond EV, your home for everything BYD. If you watch the short I just uploaded about whether or not my BYD seal would lose battery while I was away on a trip, if you look closely you would have seen that I came back to a flat tyre. So today I'm going to fix it, but I'm not going to use the included tyre repair kit that comes with the car, I'm going to be using tools that everyone should have in their garage should this ever happen to you. So to get started, here's what you're going to need. You'll need a tyre repair kit, which you can get from any auto or hardware store. A hydraulic jack that can hold at least 2,000 kilos. A jack stand that can hold at least 2,000 kilos. A torque wrench. A 21mm wheel nut socket. Pliers, a screwdriver and a box cutter. A spray bottle with soapy water in it. Dish soap is fine. A rag. An impact wrench, but this is optional. And if you head to the boot of your car, in the tyre repair kit, you'll actually find the wheel nut cover removal tool, which you will use to remove the wheel nut covers. Now, being an EV, you need to be very careful with this step, but the first thing you need to do is jack up your car. If you look underneath the side skirts of your car, just behind the wheels, you'll see two exposed bits of body chassis, and that is the lift point where you need to place the jack to lift your car up. Slide the hydraulic jack underneath, positioning the lift directly onto that exposed piece of chassis. And then just jack it up a little bit so it's got some grip. Next, take your wheel nut cover tool, and remove the wheel nut covers. Now you don't need the impact wrench for this, you can just use a torque wrench, but take the 21mm socket and apply it to your wrench. Go over to the wheel and loosen up the wheel nuts. We're not trying to take them off completely, but with the wheel still touching the ground, it makes it easier to take them off later on. Next, jack up the car the rest of the way, lifting the wheel off the ground. Now I didn't record this bit, but next to the jack point, there is another exposed piece of chassis behind the side skirt, which you can use to place a jack stand under. Take your wrench and remove the wheel nuts. Once the wheel nuts are out, you can take off the wheel. Some punctures can be difficult to find, and this is where soapy water at a spray bottle comes in handy. For me, the puncture is easy to find, I've got a nail right here, but for others, the puncture might not be so obvious. Use the spray bottle to spray soapy water across the surface of the tyre. Where the puncture is located, you'll see active bubbles forming around the puncture hole, and that's where you know where the puncture is. If it's a screw or a nail that's punctured your tyre, you can then use the screwdriver or a pair of pliers to remove the screw or nail. Now it's time to open the tyre repair kit. In the repair kit you'll find two hand tools, a burring tool and a plug insertion tool, a tube of rubber cement and a number of tyre plugs. I refer to these as bacon strips because that's what they look like. 
You'll need to take out one of the bacon strips and thread it through the eye of the plug threading tool. Fold it over so you've got equal lengths on both sides. Next, take the hand bearing tool and insert it into the puncture hole in the tyre. This tool is designed to roughen up the edges of the puncture hole, exposing rubber fibres, providing more purchase and surface area for the plug to adhere and vulcanise to. Then take your tube of rubber cement, open it up, and then you'll need to grab your plug and cover the entire plug with rubber cement, making sure that the entire surface of the plug is covered. Rubber cement vulcanizes the rubber of the plug to the rubber of the tire and creates a permanent rubber bond between the two items. Take the plug tool with your plug covered in rubber cement and insert it into the hole. This can be quite tough, but what you need to try and do is get at least 50% of the plug through the hole. Once you're happy with how far the plug has been inserted, you then need to remove the tool by just giving it one quick hard pull. The tool will come out, but the plug will stay in the hole. Let it sit for a few minutes to give the rubber cement some time to bond. Next, take your box cutter and trim off any excess plug hanging out of the hole. I like to leave a little bit of the plug still hanging out of the hole, just so that the rubber cement has a little bit of extra rubber to bond over the hole. If you have an air compressor, you can pump it up, but if not, you'll have to take the tyre to a service station and use one of their pumps. At the service station, we're going to be using the flat tyre mode. First, set the PSI to about 43 and insert the air hose onto the tyre valve. Go back to the pump and press the flat tyre mode button. Using flat tyre mode bypasses the initial pressure reading of the tyre, which lets the pump know what pressure the tyre is currently at. Instead, it will just start pumping air directly into the tyre. Once it's done, hang up your air hose, and then go back to the tyre, and just check the plug and see if you can hear any air coming out. If you can't, you're good to go. Once you've got the tyre back in your garage, take the spray bottle with the soapy water in it and just spray it around the plug and see if any air bubbles form up. If you haven't got any air bubbles, the plug's sealed and you're good to go and get the tyre back on the car. Get the wheel back onto the wheel hub and start tightening up the wheel nuts in a star pattern. Don't tighten them up all the way, just enough to hold the wheel onto the hub. Remove the jack stand and start lowering the hydraulic jack just enough so that the tyre just touches the ground. This will stop the wheel from moving when you go to torque down the wheel nuts. I couldn't find the manufacturer specified torque setting for wheel nuts but I know that most cars are torqued between 120 to 140 newton meters. So what I'm going to do is set the torque wrench to 120 newton meters and then torque a little bit further. Tighten the wheel nuts with the torque wrench and when the torque wrench clicks, that's when you've hit 120 newton meters. 
Once you've done all five, go back to the first one and just tighten a little bit further after the click. This just double checks that the wheel nuts are in correctly and also adds a little bit of extra torque so that it ends up being somewhere in between 120 and 140 newton meters. Then reapply your wheel nut covers. Lower the car down all the way. And remove the hydraulic jack. And that's all the hard work done. Now it's time to go into the car and check the tyre pressure monitoring system to see if it gets a reading on the tyre. It will most likely not get a reading and read 0, 0.0. If this is the case, you just need to take the car out on a little drive, get a bit of rotation into the tyres and it should give you a reading after a couple of minutes. Sure enough, the tyre pressure monitoring system got a reading and it looks like everything's back to normal. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Now keep in mind, this is not a permanent fix, it's just a temporary fix. It just fixes it enough so that you're not gonna have to keep pumping up the tyre every day. I will be going to a tyre specialist later this week to get a proper puncture kit done, but until then, at least I won't have to wake up in the morning and worry about whether or not I can drive the car or not. That's it for now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.